Greetings. It's time for another teardown. This is my old Manson 13.8 volt 50 amp DC power supply, model EP850. I picked this up a few years back. It doesn't get that much use, but it, it comes in handy sometimes when I'm running 12 volt kit at home. It's a big old beast. It's a little bit wider than a domestic hi-fi amp. If you want something to compare with, there's a standard PC keyboard. Right, you can stop looking at your keyboard now. Of course it's a linear power supply, you know, the old transformer based stuff. If it was switch mode then it would be a little bit smaller. To give you some idea, these two supplies here will together output 12 volts at 64 amps. And this can manage 40 amps continuous or 50 amp surge. As you can see I've modified this by fitting a cigarette lighter outlet with cigarette lighter. This in fact is the second cigarette lighter outlet that's been fitted because the original one I took it back out because I needed to fit one to my girlfriend's car when her fag lighter packed in and she needed to run the sat nav. That's enough about that. Let's pop the lid off. As you can see I've taken off all the screws. So that one straight off. The first thing you notice obviously is this big transformer. In fact this has two sets of outputs. You've got this doubled up winding here which is the main power output. This goes to that bridge rectifier and from there through these bus bars with a pair of 47,000 microfarad caps on the bottom. Then we've got this connection which goes down to ground and this connection which then feeds to the sides of the power transistors. But also we have these blue wires so there's a separate winding on the transformer for running the control circuit. There's not much else to see from here. The fan is mains powered I've seen on the internet some people complaining that the fan's running all the time on these and wondering if it's a fault. It's not a fault. With this particular model, the fan is mains and it's switched with the mains power supply on the front. Here's a close-up of the control board and the first thing that strikes you really is that there's an awful lot missing. You see there's whole sections here dedicated to things like fan control. There's a fan output there, there's a sensor connection there. They're not used. There are sections for these various high-powered resistors which aren't on the board. There are sections for terminals and the meter connections which tell me that this is normally designed to actually fit just behind the front panel of a power supply. So what you're left with is not a lot really. You've got the bridge rectifier here and the smoothing cap which takes I think it's about 21 volts AC on these blue connections and smooths it and rectifies it up to about 27 volts DC, near as damn it. Most of the circuit then is fed via that Zener diode, which I haven't bothered trying to measure. And the rest of it is then basically two chips. This one is an LM339 quad comparator, dedicated to driving the overload light on the front, but it also feeds in to one of the connections on this chip which is marked up as frequency compensate. And what I assume it'll do is if it grounds that connection down, because it's about the only thing it can do, there's a diode in the, there's a diode in line with it. I assume if it pulls that line down, it'll shut down the regulator, which is what this is. This is an LM723CN, which is a voltage regulator. On its own, I think it can manage about 150 milliamps, but it can drive other transistors. And in fact, that's what it does. This one drives this tip 31. The tip 31 then drives this 2N3055. And this 2N3055 then drives another nine 2N3055s. So it's a regulator driving a transistor, driving a transistor, driving a whole bank of transistors. You can see there's this yellow wire here. Now this side of these resistors and this side is the output from the transistors. It's almost the final output. But this is the final output, this bus bar in the middle here. So what you get then is with these 0.1 ohm resistors, when you're drawing power, 
there's going to be a voltage drop across there, only a slight voltage drop, which I'll show you in a moment. But that can be used to drive the ammeter. The bigger the voltage drop, the bigger the current drop. Let's see that in action. And bear in mind this meter hasn't been calibrated since I bought it. So it may not be accurate, but it gives you the idea. Let's knock the power on. It's a couple of millivolts, nothing much. Maybe a little more if I get that light to come on. No. Light's broken. When I knock the cigarette lighter on. You can see this has jumped. And the meter and it's running, there we go. We're able to catch it. That. So that's how the ammeter works. VR2 is definitely the, the control to adjust if you want to alter or disable the overload facility. Because what I found just now, prior to recording this, was that when I was using this inverter with these two 200 watt light bulbs, when I'd switch it on, well, see for yourself, and gone. It's just tripped out. That went into overload and dropped the voltage down. Let's see again now. There we go. That throttles the voltage back. This thinks the voltage has gone too low and switches itself off. And I was getting that every time I tried to take the volt the current up above about halfway. So I've adjusted the overload on here now, so it's a bit more forgiving, shall we say. What I can do is if I, I've got these running through a dimmer, so if I turn it off and back on, there we go, and I can ramp these up on the dimmer, and it's happy to run them. But something else I've noticed on here as well, is you can see at the moment I'm pulling just shy of 30 amps, and in fact I can push that up to 35 amps with that. I'm actually pulling nearly 40 amps. If we take a look over here. This scope, I've calibrated it now so there's one division for each division on this meter. And if I turn it off, there's zero. So that's the zero point. This pulls about eight amps. So you can see this is basically 10 amps per division, so it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Watch when I run the inverter. Watch when I turn the dimmer switch off and run the inverter. I'll crank this up. There. This, by the way, is showing the voltage come in straight from the rectifier and the smoothing caps. So you can see, it's fairly well regulated. That's under a fairly heavy load and loaded up even higher like that. And it's dropped down to about 19 and a half volts. Offload, it's about 24 volts. I digress. What I wanted to show you on here As you can see it's quite a dirty current. Whereas this draws a very clean straight line, 0.8 amps constant, you can see this is showing about 27 amps, but this is showing that it's going above 30. And if I bring this in as well. We're touching, we're not far off 40 amps there and 35 amps on the dial. Which explains why this seems to be a little bit temperamental when driving this. This is actually drawing more at the peak volt, peak current than you'd expect. What would you expect from a cheap mains inverter? By the way, that's not just because it's going through a dimmer. 
if this is an undimmed connection and it stays still much the same. So there we have it. There's the Manson EP850. Thinking about it, if I wanted to disable the overload protection altogether, I could probably just remove D12, because that's the one link between the regulator chip and the op amp in control of the overload LED. So if I remove D12, that'll work, but the op amp has got no way of telling the LM723 to shut down. Anyway. Hope you liked it. Hope that's enlightened you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you soon.